Self-defense has moved to the forefront of Americans' minds, and scores have clamored after concealed carry guns like no other time in recent history. The argument as to the best handgun for carrying and the cartridge to go with it has lit up the internet since Al Gore invented it, and it's not likely to be settled soon. Whether you're in the field hunting, hiking, or in any wilderness setting, the revolver is the top choice in a handgun. For personal defense, the double-action revolver may be a bit less popular nowadays, but it's every bit as good a choice as it ever was. That raises a question, what exactly is the best concealed carry gun? We have some suggestions. Number 7. Ruger LCR Their goal with this product was to compete with the Smith & Wesson J-Frame, specifically used with the 642 and 442 series. These small airweight revolvers came in at a more reasonable price than the classic steel Smith & Wesson firearms. Ruger had their SP-101 series of revolvers, but they didn't have any lightweight and reasonably priced concealed carry options. The Ruger SP-101s, while great guns, are built on all steel frames and are relatively expensive compared to the Smith & Wesson 442 and 642. The LCR's manufacturing process helped to lower the price of the revolvers and its contemporary appeal was emphasized in initial marketing campaigns. The Ruger LCR is a very popular, reasonably priced double-action revolver. This gun makes use of polymer in the frame which keeps both weight and cost down. Yet, it can handle a powerful cartridge like the 357 Magnum. It's offered in a wide range of cartridges from 22 lr to the 357 Magnum. Mine, of course, is in the latter, and it's held up well to a lot of shooting. It's a small handgun that is easy to carry, chambered for a very powerful cartridge and priced so a working man can easily afford it. Number 6. Glock 17 The Glock 17, what can I say that hasn't already been said? The Glock 17 is currently in its fifth generation and is the oldest of Glock's pistols. Way back when Gaston Glock was making training grenades and folding shovels, he apparently heard the Austrian army needed a new pistol and Glock wanted to toss his hat in the ring. He gathered a group of firearm experts and went to task designing the Glock 17. The Glock 17 ended up winning the trials and became the Austrian P80. That model is the focus of today's video. After that, the fate of the Plastic Fantastic was set in stone, and the gun's popularity had it spreading like wildfire. This created a storm and the industry has never been the same. It would be a challenge to find a major firearm company that doesn't produce a striker-fired polymer frame 9mm pistol. Glock makes similar pistols in many different calibers. The Glock 17 set the bar high and continues to do so to this day. The gun was cheap to manufacture, priced well below the competition, and it changed the handgun world. The gun holds 18 9mm cartridges and became the darling of the I need a lot of capacity crowd. The Glock 17 is the carry gun of choice for millions. Number 5. Ruger 1911 Commander As a longtime Ruger gun owner, I can summarize the brand in three ways. Solid construction, reliable operation, and excellent customer support. The Ruger SR 1911 Commander is no exception. The SR 1911 CMD is described by Ruger as being a commander style pistol, trading on Colt's 4.25 inch barrel derivation of their government model, since Commander has become almost a generic title for the shorter setup. Since SR 1911 CMD has very little pizzazz as a descriptor and Commander is a Colt model, we'll just call it the CMD here. You can get this Commander in stainless steel, in two-tone, in a lighter weight version, or in 9mm. If you are looking for a Platform 1911 to customize, here you go. Or, if you just want to add a medium expensive, around $1,000 1911 to your collection, this would be a good choice. This would also be a good gun to compete with in certain classes of competition. Number 4. Smith & Wesson m &P. The Smith & Wesson m p is considered one of the main competitors for Glocks on the market of relatively cheap polymer-framed pistols. Recently, I had a chance to lay my hands on an m p 9mm and to compare it to its rival. First, let us cover the technical details. The Smith & Wesson m p is a striker-fired polymer-framed pistol. It comes in 9mm, 40 Smith & Wesson, 45 ACP, and 357 SIG calibers. Mine was the 9mm. It is a full-size handgun with a barrel length of 4.25 inches and the width of 1.2 inches. 
The 9mm version comes with two 17-round magazines. There are many features on the M&P that I prefer over the Glock, like the grip angle, trigger, and metal magazines. Plastic magazines have a tendency to stick in the magazine well when you try to eject an empty. Metal mags behave and fall out. It's also American-made, which counts with a lot of gun buyers. Number 3. Smith & Wesson J-Frame Many years ago, the first swing-out cylinder double-action revolvers from Smith & Wesson began leaving the factory. The unicycle was in production and the right flyer was yet to come. The I-frame was a 6 shot 32 and the K-frame a 6 shot 38 These revolvers were immensely popular and set the pace for police and civilian revolvers for many years to come. The I-frame was later offered in 38 Smith & Wesson with a 5 shot cylinder. When the 38 caliber version was supplied with a 2 inch barrel, it was known as the Terrier. While a 146 grain bullet at 650 feet per second is no powerhouse, the Terrier offered more power than the 32 Smith & Wesson Long. It's easy to conceal and simple to carry. That means I'll have the revolver with me which counts for a lot with carry guns. A surprising number of the hardcore shooters I know do pretty much the same thing. Number 2. Glock 23 When the Glock 23 Generation 3 was released in 1998, the gun was already 8 years old while the 40 Smith & Wesson was still the law enforcement darling after decades of the 38 Special. And this was followed by 6 years of 9mm dominance in the holster for most law enforcement officers. The 40 Smith & Wesson had already seen nearly half a decade of stealing market share across the board for federal and local law enforcement agencies against the 9mm. The Glock 23 is lightweight, bulletproof, easy to handle from a recoil perspective, and they carried a lot of ammunition which, when it came down to it, balanced well with a full magazine. One could say the Glock 23 did more than its even more famous siblings, the Glock 17 and the Glock 19 both in 9mm to solidify the brand's name as the universal go-to for law enforcement. The Glock 23 still has a huge sales volume in today's market, despite a lot of things. The law enforcement return to the 9mm almost across the board, new interesting pistols from rival manufacturers, as well as multiple generational changes to the Glock pistols. Proof of its staying power and the fact that Glock got it right so many years ago design-wise. Number 1. Ruger LCP at 9 ounces unloaded, the Ruger LCP lives up to its name of being lightweight and compact. A pistol this small tends to be carried more often than not, which is what we want in a CCW pistol. Equally important are the external surfaces. There are no sharp edges, protrusions, or areas prone to snag or otherwise impede the draw of the Ruger LCP. This is not just with the special edition we purchased, but something we have seen on hundreds of LCPs over the past few years. Aftermarket support in the way of extended magazines, lasers, holsters, and even a pocket clip is very strong for the LCP. It went on to launch a revolution of Micro 380 handguns. The tiny gun is lightweight, inexpensive, and comfortable to carry. The 380 ACP is not a powerhouse, but it's often enough.